Hello guys, HL here, coming to you with another World of Warship Splits video. In today's video, we will be taking a look at the update that just dropped on the 23rd of September for World of Warship Splits, which is update 3.4. Before we start the video though, I just wanted to mention that this video is going to be quite long, so you might want to sit down and relax before you start listening. I am also going to be reading on the patch notes and ending some of my opinions so yeah if you want to read the notes for yourself i am going to leave a link down in the video description down below the first thing in the notes are new maps which it says three new maps have been added to the next update or the current update which is now what i'm showing on the screen the first map is freya's lantern a tier 7 to 10 domination map based on the Jack or Lantern, big and small islands sparsely populated around the map. For the description, it says at the very start of the match, the team can split into two divisions, north and south, both going for different objectives. Another tactic is to fully commit to the south and take the two underlying objectives and hold the nose. This map its face, like it says, looks like a jack or lantern. The islands are placed in that formation, and as you can see, the gameplay in the background is showing the map. While I can't give too much of an opinion or exactly uh, talk about what kind of strategy you can use, as I've only had one match on this map, which is with the Akizuki, as you can see on the screen right now. I just personally from this one match feel that this map will be decent for destroyers and shell spammers as there's lots of islands for us to hide behind and shoot over. So yeah, I'll probably say this is going to be an interesting map and I will talk about it more if you want to watch a video of me talking about it. The next map is the Eye of the Typhoon, a tier 8 to 10 domination map with small and large islands surrounding each capture point. The description says at the beginning the teams will rally to the two closest points from there you can either push the cap closest or risk it and push for the furthest point outflanking the enemy i'm also having a video that's coming up after this it's going to be another clip showing this map i think this map is like it's quite small so it offers quite a lot of room for close quarters combat and also the islands give you a good opportunity to do a destroyer rush which will definitely make the game interesting as here you can see the clip has switched and this is the hourglass map sadly i'm just lagging or i'm not sure if i'm lagging or the lightning British dd is lagging more about that later but yeah you can see the map is in an hourglass shape and i think it will offer some special play styles because you could just go around the flanks or push directly as the paper said or you could get the majority of your team to go around the sides and hold the enemy while have a destroyer slip through the center and reach the front. The next map, or is there another map? Yeah. This should be the hourglass map. Not really sure this is the hourglass or the typhoon, but you guys can correct me down in the comment section down below. The hourglass map says it's a tier 6 to 10 base capture map where the map is based on an hourglass. Although the enemy's base is close, it will be too dangerous to push directly. Use small islands to your advantage and try to flank your enemies from the sides. So yeah, this is basically I think what I just talked about just now. I think this is the hourglass map and I'm sorry for saying it's the eye of the typhoon. So I'm not really sure if I've played the typhoon yet, probably just Freya's lantern and hourglass. Moving on, they have also added a new mod called Epicenter, which is from the World of Warships Blitz on PC. I will be showing a picture on the screen right now, what it looks like. The map it will be on is going to be Cage, and this is only going to be available in the training room. It says this game mode will only be available at this stage in the training room, as this is a new mode we want you, the players, to test it out and give us your feedback. This mode is similar to Domination except for the fact that instead of being points A, B and C, it's one big point with smaller circles inside. So it says, mode rule is similar to Domination, the team gets 1000 points first will win, 
the team that gets that destroys all enemy ships will also win. There are three concentric rings. They are the control zones which can be captured independently and differ in points. In a circle will award 8 points every 5 seconds. In a ring will award 5 points every 5 seconds. After ring will award 3 points every 5 seconds. This map is for tier 6 and higher ships. While I haven't played this mode as I've never had enough people to play a training match with, it will certainly be fun if it's added to the game as teams will be competing to push into the circle and the fights will get more intense which to me in the long run might be good for the game because we don't need snipers in every single match we need more close up battles as that will test skill the next part we have new battle medals we have added 9 new battle medals to our game each coming with their own title big game hunter destroy one carrier and one battleship in a battle counter strike Destroy the enemy who wins the first strike medal in a battle. And the, for information, the first strike is the medal you'll get when you are the first player in the entire match to kill an enemy ship. Next medal is Clash Zone, which is capture the control zone three times in a battle. Coming after that, we have No Mercy, which means destroy one aircraft carrier, one battleship, one cruiser, and one destroyer in a battle. And I think this will be an interesting medal because it's not extremely difficult and it's not easy either so it's like a medium medal which to me is just nice to have not really sure why though the next medal is citadel crisis which is hit three citadels three times in 10 seconds which is probably going to be fairly okay in the roma following we have kraken slayer which is destroy the enemy who wins the kraken unleashed medal in the battle last but not least we have overwhelming victory, which means win a battle by destroying all enemies without losing any teammates. In my opinion, I think the medals are just going to be another... It's like, it's an achievement, but I don't really see much of a purpose with it other than bragging, because you don't earn anything from having the medals. But that's just my opinion, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below. Moving on, we have mechanism changes, which have fire and flooding resistance changes. For fire and flooding resistance, it says this will not only reduce fire and flooding chances, but also reduce the amount of damage from fire and flooding. This will make the attribution much more valuable in the game and strongly increases the way you play in higher tier battles. For flood damage, it says as a compensation of the fire and flooding attribution change, Flooding now causes overall damage equals to 25% of target, target ship's max health and increase from 20%. For carpet bombing, it says for each dive bombing squadron, the maximum time of dropping all bombs will be no longer than 0.5 seconds. And currently, the only ship or aircraft carrier that can carpet bomb is the British tier 7 carrier Ark Royal. So, the first point mentioned that it will not only reduce fire and flooding chances, which will certainly be a problem for the British battleship line, because ships like King George V and Monarch have slow firing guns because, well, yeah, they are BBs. But a lot of their damage comes from the fact that their shells can easily set other ships on fire. I don't think this will affect ships like Haragumo and sister too much because these ships have a very high fire rate so the effect can be too prominent and going back to the British BBs I feel that it will take a lot of power out of them as they have lost one of their valuable assets so I'm not really sure how this is going to go we'll just have to wait and see what happens in time for the next point it says added voice changes in the settings which says there are 8 kinds of national voice options, English, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Portuguese, Russian, and Spanish. There is also a special option to base the language on the ship. The special option is determined by the ship's nation. No matter what language you have in the game, when you have a Japanese ship, you will always hear Japanese language. You will still be able to read what other players have said in the chat box based on your game's language setting. 
as I have waited for the update to drop before recording this video. I also tried out this feature but personally I don't enjoy it as much compared with the multiple languages from PC because the one on PC just sounds let's say very solid, very commanding and very maybe let's say strong or brave but the one in the PC, I'm sorry, the Blitz version sounds a little gimmicky. It's like some sort of one-up toy, high-pitched voice, and shouting in a strange way, let's just say. So yeah, I guess it's all down to personal preference. It's not my preference, so I'm going to be leaving it on English. But there are definitely some people that will enjoy it a lot more than me. They have also added a new filter for your ships in port. It says, added 3 new filters for your ships for easy searching. Premium ships, black ships, and favorite ships. So you can now filter your, your favorite ships easily. This is probably just a quality of life adjustment. Not really sure how much I'll use it though. Some people will appreciate it, some people won't. I don't really feel a need for it, but it's there if you like to use it. The developers have also added legendary equipment. For starters, Kill 10 Russian destroyer Kabaros gets artillery popping room, which increases main battery firing range by 12% and reduces torpedo range by 18%. Kill 10 UK cruiser Minoto gets high power engine, which increases traverse acceleration by 25%, increases acceleration by 25%. Mag reduces steering gear survivability and power system survivability by 25%. And the third one, we have the tier 10 Japanese cruiser Zhao, which has steering gear modification. It increases the max traverse speed and traverse acceleration by 10% while reducing surface detection by 5%. Tier 10 German cruiser Hindenburg gets artillery blocking room, which increases main battery firing range by 8% and surface detection by 12%. While I can't exactly talk about these ships as I rarely play in tier 10 battles and I don't own any of them, I'll just say it's a move by Wargaming to make ships that are used less often a little more viable so people will use them in games. They've also made training room adjustments, allowing you to have an option of having 5 minutes, 7 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes and 20 minutes so you can have a longer match if you desire. As for the next part, it says UK Destroyer's full release. I'm not sure what the tier 1 UK Destroyer is as it's not written here. Maybe it doesn't exist. But starting with tier 2, we have the Media. For tier 3, we have Valkyrie with 2 times fuel smoke. Tier 4, we have Wakeful with 3 times fuel smoke. At tier 5, we have Akasta with 4 fuel smokes. Coming in at tier 6 is Icarus with also 4 fuel smokes. At tier 7, we have the Jervis with 4 fuel smokes and an addition, 2 extra or 2 sonar consumables. At tier 8, we have Lightning with 4 fuel smokes, 2 sonars and 2 air defense alerts. At tier 9 and tier 10, we have Jutland and Daring which both have 5 fuel smokes, 3 sonars and 2 air defense alerts respectively. Personally, I think this will probably be releasing somewhere in October as the end of September is here. Maybe I'm wrong, you can correct me in the comment section down below. But I'll just talk about the newest features that the British destroyers will bring to the game, which is they have individually firing torpedoes, which means skilled captains can make all the tops hit or if they're not careful, all tops can miss altogether. This will add an interesting element to the gameplay as you can attack a ship's bow and somehow still get all tops to hit as you can get them all in a straight line which will make both dodging tops easier and harder. So yeah, can't talk too much about it because I haven't really seen it much. Probably will make a video in the future about it, but let's move on to the next point. They've also added a consumables reminder saying that if the loaded item is out and you have not activated auto resupply, the frame of the consumable slot will turn red to remind the player that it is empty. Supplies and boosters. If the loaded item is out of stock, the frame of the slot will also turn red. If the slot is vacant, 
there are other items in stock, then the slot will turn green to remind players that they can add boosters. I find this great as I myself also I also forget to resupply very often as I'm just trying to get into the next match. Coming in next is the reward tree. It says this is an event where rewards are linked in the chain forming a tree like a tree like structure. To unlock each reward, you will need to spend the tokens that you have gained. Alternatively, you can also use gold to unlock the next reward. Reward line up is a chain that can only be unlocked in order. The last reward of each chain is the final reward. If you have the reward already, then the unlock button is hidden to them. When the event ends, all leftover tokens will be automatically converted to silver. And it says that we can expect to see this at the end of Halloween. I'll just be reading faster because I don't want this video to be too long and I'll only be talking at spots where the stuff like ship balancing. For the next part, we have Blitz Pass Fleet Gift. Each time a player purchases the Blitz Pass, a gift will be sent to all fleet members from their fleet showing up in fleet chat. The gift will last 30 days and players should claim this before it expires. If the fleet member quits the fleet, all unclaimed gifts will be deleted. Also, if the player who purchases the Blitz Pass leaves the fleet, then the gift will also disappear. When obtaining the Blitz Pass and the Premium Blitz Pass, both will give fleet members a small random reward after being shared in the fleet chat. The reward pool will differ depending whether you have obtained the Blitz Pass or the Premium Blitz Pass, with the Premium Blitz Pass having better rewards. The next part, we have Naval Academy Level Change which says a few levels have been added accordingly. To join a fleet, it has been moved from level 3 to level 7. If a player who is lower than level 7 and is in a fleet, they are still able to access it. Team Skirmish, it has been moved from level 3 to level 9. Respawn Mode, it has been moved from level 3 to level 13. And Battle Royal, it has been moved from level 3 to level 4, 14. When these three battle mods are, un are locked, the player can only see the time remaining and the description of each mod. Press the mod icon and a hint will appear displaying the unlock conditions. For tagline introductions, it says we have added in more tagline introductions to the Italian cruiser line and the British battleship line, giving you a better understanding of the line before you start it. This can be found in the tag tree of ships mentioned above. Here, you will see an information, I shake icon, and once click, it will highlight the ship line. I find this good as it will give beginners, as it says, more understanding to ships instead of what I did, which was starting a line, going until something like kill 6 or 7, and regretting, and regrinding, and the line, which will waste a lot of time. Last part, oops, or not the last part, but it just lists as other, it says, Minimap warning of enemies in your base. If the opposite team is capturing your base, there will be a warning notifying the players that this is happening. Fleet challenge UI adjustment. Color tone has been changed. New portraits. New link, citizen and special portraits. Italian line now selectable for new players. Players can now select the Italian cruiser line at the beginning of the game when first starting out. Improved blitz challenge. Added skip button that will cause goal to skip the challenge. UI and background has been changed. Tagline intro improvement. Adjusted alignment to make it look better. At the last part, it says ship balancing. And sorry, I just hit my phone, so I apologize if you are wearing headphones and got shot from loud volume. But here it says ship balancing. For battleships, Tier 5 US Battleship New York, main gun max shell dispersion has been changed by reduced by 7%, tier 5 French battleship Britain, main gun max shell dispersion has been reduced by 7%, tier 8 Japanese battleship Amagi, and tier 8 Japanese premium battleship T, torpedo protection has been increased from 15 to 18%. Tier 8 Russian premium battleship Lenin can use a maximum of 4 damage controls each battle, increased from 3. Tier 9 US premium battleship Georgia, has ship skill engine accelerator 1 added. For cruisers, tier 5 UK cruiser Emerald has had main gun fire range increased from 9.48 km to 7. to 9.78 km. Tier 6 UK cruiser Linder 
Pier 7 Cruiser Fiji and Pier 8 Cruiser Edinburgh has Ming Giant official max penetration power increased by 7%. The Tier 6 Italian Cruiser Trento has Ming Giant reload speed increased from 11 seconds to 12.5 seconds. Main gun range decreased from 10.5 km to 10.2 km. Tier 6 Russian cruiser Badioni. Main gun HE shell penetration has been increased by 7%. Tier 8 German cruiser Admiral Hipper. Main gun range has been increased from 10.32 km to 10.62 km. Tier 8 German premium cruiser Prince Eugen. Main gun range has been increased from 10.5 km to 10.62 km. Main gun AP shell max penetration power has been increased by 4%. Tier 9 Japanese premium cruiser Azuma, main gun max shell dispersion has been changed or reduced by 4%. Tier 9 Japanese cruiser Ibuki and Tier 10 Japanese cruiser Zhao, main gun max shell dispersion has been reduced by 7%. Tier 9 US premium cruiser Alaska, consumer range has been decreased from 12.3 km to 10.2 km. Tier 10 British cruiser Minotaur, max turning angle has been increased from 7.4 degrees to 8.2 degrees. Tier 10 US premium cruiser Buffalo has main gun range has been increased from 10.5 km to 10.8 km and main gun max shell dispersion has been decreased to 4%. Tier 8 Russian cruiser Tashkent as ship HP has been increased from 16,500 to 16,700. Main gun range has been increased from 8.1 to 8.4 kilometers. Tier 10 US cruiser de gearing has rudder shift has been decreased from 3.6 seconds to 3.3 seconds. The tier 10 Pan Asian destroyer Yueyang main gun range has been decreased from 8.4 kilometers to 8.1 kilometers. Ship hit points have been decreased from 16,600 to 16,100 hit points. Lastly, we have the aircraft carriers with the US Premium Tier 7 carrier Saipan is the only one in this balance. The fighter model is currently changed to F4U. Torpedo bomber model is currently changed to BT BD BTB1. Added equipment auxiliary armament modification 1. Added secondary battery auto firing range plus 5%. Added artillery plotting room modification 1. Added secondary battery auto firing range plus 7. Lastly, we have bug fixes with landing displaying the Soviet Union flag instead of Russia St. Andrews. Closing the chat with the cross at the top auto sends the message has now been fixed, and translation errors on a few missions have been fixed. Personally, I think the ship balancing is mostly good to balance out the game as there are some ships that are just a little overpowered like let's say the Trento because the Trento easily collapsed destroyers and other like cruisers. Some ships like Emerald are also receiving some love and they are being buffed up so people will use them more in the future. However though, I'm not really sure why Wargaming is doing this, they have not nerfed the tier 7 US premium carrier Saipan but they have given it a buff of having secondaries and while many of you might argue that they won't be used much in the first place because the Saipan is going to be sitting in the map for the most part I'll just think that it isn't very nice for the game as the ship is already kind of overpowered or overpowered depending on how you see it and now it's getting secondaries which will make it slightly better at fighting against destroyers. So that basically brings us to the end of the notes and more or less the end of what I plan to say. I will be making a separate video if I decide to change anything that I said or rather have a new opinion or new thought on the game. If you guys want me to show any ship in particular, you can tell me down in the comment section down below. As for future videos on ships like the Roma and the new Japanese DD which I just got, the Akizuki, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to see more of those videos in the future. I'll let this clip play in the background so you guys can enjoy the video. My name is HL, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.